ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear sisters in Islam Today we are beginning a short course in some narrations some ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding women and this course is not a very in-depth course discussing all the masail of women especially tahara and nikah and talaq and their responsibilities in detail towards their husband and children but this is a small course in which we will be touching some aspects of women and what islam deems them as and what is the status of women in Islam what are some of the very important responsibilities and how to live a good life and how to be a good Muslim and how to prepare for Akhirah so basically these are more than 40 ahadith and in the light of these ahadith we will be learning some very important aspects of Islam and some responsibilities of women and showing uh, the status of women in Islam usually ulama in the past they have been uh, following the way of collecting uh, 40 ahadith and there are many books one of them is the famous book of Imam al-Nawawi al-Arba'oon al-Nawawiya in which he has collected 40 ahadith or more dealing with the very basic principles usul of Islam and after him and even before him some ulama have been collecting 40 ahadith or more 44, 43, 41 or 50 ahadith like uh, Imam Ibn Rajab has added some ahadith to uh, Imam Nawawi's book so this is the way of the ulama to collect a set of ahadith and 40 ahadith is generally uh, seen as uh, much and uh, its abundance if something is collected like 40 ahadith or 40 things so it is deemed as uh, much more it suffices so we have very less time and we are almost 28 minutes late so we will be beginning this I had just calculated the amount of time required to finish all these ahadith almost if we have to finish 40 ahadiths in 2 hours you can understand it's uh, or 4 hours if we uh, today 2 hours and tomorrow 2 hours so it will take around uh, 10 ahadiths per hour we have to go with this speed and it's very difficult so let's see how much we can finish and uh, we will at least try to learn one lesson from each hadith so I have given some references uh, uh, which book stands for uh, like uh, uh, the abbreviations uh, for uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, Meme for uh, Sahih Muslim. So this way I have given these abbreviations so you can uh, in the, the original text and the references given in the book you can uh, correspond these uh, alphabet or these names these references cor correspond to these uh, names of the books. So we will begin. The first thing is that in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has given and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given women a very highest status 
and to show the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave the example of a mother's mercy to her children and Umar ibn Khattabi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anhu qal qadima ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam bi sabiyin fa idha imra'atum min as-sabi tabtaghi Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala says that some captives or prisoners came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and among them was a woman and she was searching for something idha wajadat sabiyan fi sabi akhadathu fa alsaqathu bi batniha wa arda'atha arda'athu he said that when idha wajadat sabiyan fi sabi whenever she found some child from the captives or prisoners akhadathu she caught that child she took that child fa alsaqathu bi watniha and she took that child and uh, made that child uh, fed that child or made that suckle fa qala rasulullah fa qala lana rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam atarawna hadhihi almar'ata tarihatan waladaha fi an-nar rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam talked to umar ibn al-khattab and the companions and he said atarawna hadhihi almar'a do you see this woman and do you think that this woman will throw her child in fire qulna la we said no never wallahi wa hiya taqdiru ala an la tatrah he said that no by allah if she can save that child from that fire and prevent that child falling into fire she will do whatever she can if it is in her power she will never let her child be thrown into fire faqala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam lallahu arhamu bi ibadihi min hadhihi bi waladiha he said allah is more kind more merciful to his servants his slaves ibad than this woman to her child so this hadith is narrated by imam al bukhari and muslim and the wordings the awal lafz li muslim the wordings are from imam muslim sahih so from this hadith we learn that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in trying to explain the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave an example of a woman a mother but he did he did not make tashbih there is a doubt that can we give an example for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fala tadribu lillahi al-amthal this means that we cannot give any example equating creation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said lallahu arhamu allah is more kind allah is more merciful not equal to not similar to allah is more merciful to his creation to his ibad servants than this woman she is to her child so from this hadith one thing is that uh, rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in trying to explain how merciful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is he gave an example not of a father of a man but he gave an example of a mother a woman so this shows that in islam women are not deemed as evil but she is a a woman and especially a mother is such a honored that her mercy has been shown to explain the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another hadith the responsibility of children or people towards their mother is shown and abi huraira taqal جاء رجل الى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله من احق الناس بحسن صحابتي قال امك قال ثم من قال ثم امك قال ثم من قال ثم امك قال ثم من قال ثم ابوك امام البخاري ان مسلم نريت احاديث با ترو امام ابو هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه and he says that ja a rajulun ila rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a man came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said 
O Prophet of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Man ahaqqun nasi bi husni sahabati Who amongst the people is more worthy of my best dealings? Bi husni sahabati, my best companionship. Who is more worthy that I should be his companion and I should be merciful to him, deal good, well with him? So he said, Ummuk, it's your mother. That the best person in the world, the more, most worthy person in the world that you should be good to is your mother. He repeated the question. After my mother, who's there? He said, Thumma Ummuk, your mother again. He said, Thumma Man, then who after her? And he said, Thumma Ummuk, your mother. And he repeated the word Thumma, Thumma Ummuk, after her, your mother again. Qala Thumma Man, he said, then who after my mother for the fourth time? And he said, Thumma Abuk, then your father. This shows that in dealing with people, the most worthy person of our goodness and ihsan is our mothers. And even the father is there because for the fourth, fourth time, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the father. But for three consecutive times, when the person again and again he asked and repeated the question, who is more worthy of my dealing him or uh, the person with uh, uh, ihsan and kindness, the, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the mother. This shows that mothers are more worthy of kindness than fathers. But you cannot omit the father and not ignore him, but he is also there. But even mother and father, both we should be doing ihsan towards. But Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned the mother before the father. Why? Some ulama, they say that why is mother mentioned three times before the father? They said there are three things that mother are, mothers are separate from father and they, they bear some burdens. They go through some hardships with father cannot go. One is the hamil carrying the baby in their wombs for nine months. This is a very hard time for a mother. Then the time of birth, the, the, the birth pains, she goes through that and not the father. And then after uh, that, when the child is born, for two years, the mother has to feed the child. So these are the three things, carrying the child in her womb. And secondly, after that, the birth pains and then feeding the child for two years. So these are the three things which only mother does and not the father. And after that, even father has responsibilities. So father is also mentioned. But this shows the status of mothers in Islam that they are mentioned for, uh, for the children in dealing good that they are more worthy than the father. They are worthier than the father. So this hadith also signifies that in Islam, a woman and especially a mother has a very high status and she demands goodness, kindness and best relationship and she must be respected along with the father. Her heart should not be broken and one should not speak harsh to her and she is very uh, kind to him when he was or she was a child so he should uh, deal with her in the same way but in better ways. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Allah says, you should talk to your parents قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا respectfully and with kindness. You should talk to them, giving them respect, not speaking harsh and not breaking their hearts. Number three. How parents should live with the children and how should they treat them and what is the status of daughters in Islam and how they should be uh, parents should be dealing with the children how should they be treating the children 
raising them up, bring, bringing them up. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says, Ja'atni miskinatun tahmilu ibnatayni laha. A poor woman came to me and she was carrying two daughters with her. فَأَطْعَمْتُهَا ثَلَاثَ تَمَرَاتِ I gave her three dates. فَأَعْطَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُمَا تَمْرَةً That woman, that poor lady, gave two daughters one date each. وَرَفَعَتْ إِلَى فِيهَا تَمْرَةً لِتَأْكُلَهَا And one of the dates, she herself was hungry, and she raised that tamra, that uh, date, towards her mouth to eat. فَاسْتَطْعَمَتْهَا إِبْنَتَاهَا Her daughters, when they saw this, they ate their own and they looked at her and they wanted, they demanded that that one date which she was trying to eat, that should be given to them. They asked for that also. What did she do? فَشَقَّتِ التَّمْرَةَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ تُرِيدُ أَن تَأْكُلَهَا بَيْنَهُمَا This woman, when she saw that her daughters want that, that day too. She made two, it broke it into two parts to shik and he gave one to one daughter and the another to the other daughter. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala says, فَأَعْجَبَنِي شَعْنُهَا Seeing this, I was astonished. I, it moved me. فَأَعْجَبَنِي فَذَكَرْتُ الَّذِي صنعت لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I mentioned this incident and what this woman did with her children, with her two daughters. I mentioned this incident to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. فقال, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَوْجَبَ لَهَا بِهَا الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Jannah obligatory for her. He made that she will definitely enter Jannah. أو أعتقها بها من النار Or he said that Allah has freed this woman from Jahannam, from the fire of Jahannam. This is the Bukhari, uh, narration from Bukhari and Muslim and the wordings are from Muslim. And in one of the narrations, uh, in another tariq, another tariq, one of the uh, ways through which a hadith comes, he said, مَنِ بُتُولِيَ مِنَ الْبَنَاتِ بِشَيْءٍ فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنَّ كُنَّ لَهُ سِطْرًا مِنَ النَّارِ Anyone, whoever is put into a fitna or a bala or in, an, uh, in, a, in a test, if Allah puts a person into a test, in a fitna, in a trial, he is tried by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these daughters. Daughters are a test for the parents. فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنْ But in this test, he does good to them. He treats them generously or well. كُنَّ لَهُ سِتْرًا مِنَ النَّارِ These daughters will become a shield for him from the hellfire. So, in this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that treating daughters well becomes a good deed so that a person is saved from the hellfire or he or she will enter, this is general, this is not for the mothers only, man includes the father also. Mani bituliya min al banati bi shay. If a person is tested and tried by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these daughters and after receiving these daughters from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنْ He treated them kindly. أَحْسَنَ إِحْسَانًا So he does ihsan upon them. He provides them. He does talk to them kindly and does not show to people that I have a burden in my family and Allah punish me through, through these daughters. So if mothers and fathers, they do not say like this, and treat their children and especially daughters well, kunna lahu sitram min an these daughters will become a shield for them from the hellfire. So, in Islam, daughters save the parents. Daughters are not a burden. They are the cause and means of saving oneself from the hellfire. 
So if parents treat the, the, the children well, these daughters well, they become sitr. Kunna lahu sitra minan nar. Sitr is something that keeps you apart from something. Sitr is something as a whale, a shield, something that comes between you and the hellfire. So this hadith is a very good hadith for parents and it also shows that in Islam daughters are not evil and one should not be sad when uh, there are daughters in the family. So in today's society we see that uh, the mothers-in-law they are very unhappy with the daughters-in-law uh, when they bear girls. They don't remember and they forget that they themselves were daughters once. So this is a fact they should remember that in Islam daughters are not evil and they are the means of entering, entering Jannah and they are the shield for a person from Jahannam. Are women evil? An Abdullah ibn Amr, An Abdullah ibn Amr, one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abdullah ibn Amr, he narrates, "An Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, al dunya mata' wa khayr mata' al dunya al mar'at al salihah, al dunya mata' the whole world." is provision mata something which is necessary and required for the daily lives food clothing and house and many things a person needs these things in this life to live peacefully and to live well so for good life a person needs a lot of things so the whole world is mata for dunya in in this in this life wa khayru mata'i dunya al mar'atu salihah but the best of the provision which a person can receive and have in this world is al maratu saliha a righteous a pious woman so in all the treasures and all the means that are provided in this world allah has kept everything that we need in this world not everything that we demand everything that we want but everything that we need there is a difference between what we want and what we have. So what we need. So all the needs are provided in this world. But all walakum fiha ma tashtahi anfusukum in Jannah, whatever we demand, desire, all the desires cannot be fulfilled in this life. But all the needs are available and Allah has kept everything in this world. So a lot of things are there. But amongst all these things, treasures and bounties and all the mata which is provided to human beings in this world for a man rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says wa khayru mata'i dunya al mar'atu salihah amongst all the bounties among all the provided things and the best provision that can be given to a person is al mar'atu salihah not just a woman al mar'ah but al mar'atu salihah a righteous woman who knows the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is Allah's rights upon her she should worship Allah alone and none else and she should know that Allah has given some commands in the Quran and he has sent his sent his sent his messenger Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so she should learn and know that the commandments of Allah and the messenger are to be followed and to be fulfilled and she should take care of her husband and children and all the relatives and she should be doing all her duties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the family so al maratu saliha a righteous woman is one who has good aqeedah and she does practice Islam and she looks after her family the children specially and she takes care of her husband. She supports him, which will come in the latter part of this book, inshallah. So, the best of the provisions is for a man is Al Maratu Saliha, a righteous woman. All the treasures of this dunya, all the things that a person can possess, 
there is nothing equal to a righteous woman so this is a very respectful statement for a woman this is a, a very good statement for a woman that a pious and a righteous woman is the best thing a man can have in this life so this hadith is uh, showing that a women are not deemed as evil but a righteous woman is the best of things best of the provisions best of the treasures a person can have in this life this hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived in a time when women were despised hated and that was the thing that they were not given any rights and daughters were killed and buried alive he lived in those days when women were considered uh, considered as just commodity as we see today also in the ad advertisement uh, world and uh, media world in those times women were tortured and they were deprived of their rights and they had no right to speak and there were many things which men committed uh, many crimes men committed against women in those time rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave a statement showing that he did not hate women some people may distort his statements but we have to take the proper meaning of the statements which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave about women anas radiyallahu anhu says an anas qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam hubba ilayya min ad-dunya an-nisa'u wat-tayyib wa ju'ila qurratu 'ayni fi as-salah the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in this world women and perfume have been made dear to me and my comfort has been provided in prayer in salah salah has been made qurratu ayni the uh, we can say uh, cooling of my eyes or heart in arabic they call it heart actually so cooling of my eyes so in this hadith rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned women even before salah and he mentioned women even before perfume which is a very uh, delicate thing and people uh, no one hates perfume he said hubbi ilayya min ad-dunya an-nisa among all the things that are available in this dunya living things or things people or things among them hubbi ilayya min ad-dunya an-nisa wa at-tayyib it has been made dear to me who women and tayyib rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved tayyib very much fragrance and uh, he loved uh, itr and perfume and he also always used to uh, wear perfume and salah was the most dear thing for him in activities so person people things and actions there are three things mentioned from people he said that hubba ilayya min ad-dunya in dunya there are lots of things there are people there are things there are activities so in dunya women are there as a person they are made dear to me from things tayyib is very dear to me i like perfume so he said that it is made dear to me it is from allah the word hubba signifies it is not his choice hubba it is made dear to him from allah subhanahu wa taala which means that even allah subhanahu wa taala has granted women as a bounty and khair in dunya and you will notice that the first person to console the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he received the message of allah was not a man but a woman he was seeing all what happened with him jibril came to him and he you know uh, he talked to him and this was, was a very strange incident for him he was not prepared for that and when he came home and he said zammiluni zammiluni he talked to his wife khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha and she told him that allah will not destroy you 
Allah will not make you feel ashamed. He will not do any harm to you. And she consoled him and she talked to him and she gave him courage. So this was the woman that made Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam feel good. And she was the woman by his side all her life till she died. She was a faithful wife and she helped him in deen and dunya, in da'wah, in, in every aspect of his life. So, حُبِّبَ إِلَيَّ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا and nisa First. Secondly, from things, الطيب. And three, from actions, وَجُوعِ إِلَى قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ And my comfort has been provided in prayer, in salah. So, best of the actions which Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved in times of distress and in times of happiness was salah. In the night he used to pray for long hours. Throughout the night he used to uh, stand in prayer and that was his way even after he was uh, above 50. Above 50 in Medina that happened. And in 40 years of age he received the salah and then he lived 13 years in Mecca and after that when he was 53, he migrated to Medina and these ahadis which uh, denote that he used to pray long salah, long prayers are after 53 of age. So, from this hadith we learn that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa did not show hatred for women. He did not show that, that he despised women. Rather, he showed that women are made dear to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even Allah does not hate women. Even Allah does not hate women. In Christianity, the root of all evil is women. And the childbearing was given as a punishment for giving that fruit to Adam wasalam, in the Bible. So uh, according to the Bible, God punished women that they will have to go through the child birth pains and that is not ajr, that is a punishment. So they will get anything for that? We don't know, according to them. But in Islam, if a woman dies a death while bearing a child, she is a shaheedah. So she is given such a status, such a high, high, high status. So from this hadith, we see that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that women are made dear to me. Who are the good women? What are the good qualities of women? Especially wives. And Abi Udayna al-Sadafi. Abu Udayna al-Sadafi narrates, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qaal, خير نسائكم الودود الولود المواتية المواسية إذا اتقين الله والشر نسائكم المتبرجات المتخيلات وهن المنافقات لا يدخل الجنة منهن إلا مثل الغراب الأعصم He said the best among your women is the, is the ones that loves her husband devotedly. Al Walud, Al Wadud. Al Wad in Arabic means affection and loving. So they are devotedly loving to uh, her husband, her, their husband. The one who bears more children. Al Walud. Some scholars they said, How can a person know this? This is known by the family, that in the family that they bear children. So by this way people can know. How can people know that these, this woman will bear more child before her marriage? So it is from the family uh, uh, generally known that uh, the bearing of the child is not a problem in this family. Some scholars have said this. خَيْرُ نِسَائِكُمُ الْوَدُودِ الْوَلُودِ الْمُوَاتِيَةِ الْمُوَاسِيَةِ Who lives in harmony and agreement with her husband does not annoy him and she lives in harmony without any clashes without disturbing his life and her own in as a result so al muatiya 
واتا تو ہیو لیو ان ہارمنی المواتیہ والمواسیہ اینڈ دا سمپتھیٹک شی از سمپتھیٹک ان ہز پرابلمس اینڈ ہز ڈیلی ڈرجری اینڈ ہز ڈفیکلٹیز آف لائف شی کنسولس ہم شی از ویری شو سمپتھی ناٹ دیٹ واٹ ایور یو ڈو یو ڈو ایٹ یو آفس یو بزنس وی ڈونٹ نو دیٹ یو ہیو ٹو برنگ دا منی and put it on the table at the day of end of the day no but she lives in harmony with him without quarreling without unnecessary arguments and she supports him in his problems she supports him morally al muasiya and shows her sympathies to her husband ida taqina allah provided they fear allah it is the the condition that your harmony with your husband should not be against the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The husband demands that you do not wear hijab. So hadith tells that you should be in agreement with the husband but not against taqwa. He takes the wife to the parties without hijab, she will not go. Why? Because it is against taqwa. إِذَا تَقَيْنَ اللَّهِ So they should love the husband. They should be in agreement and harmony with the husband and they should support the husband but not in sin, not in wrong things. So the first condition and the basic condition is that إِذَا تَقَيْنَ Allah, They are best women provided they are, they have taqwa. If they have no taqwa, no matter how much they please the husband, they will not please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the goal of a woman is not just to please the husband, but of every human being is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa is the best thing through which we can find nearness and respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, Inna akramakum in عند الله Inna akramakum عند الله atqaakum The best and the most respected ones amongst you are those who are atqaqo, more pious. So, if there is no taqwa, no piety, a person cannot gain respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gain uh, ikram from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, they should be having taqwa. And, وَشَرُّ نِسَائِكُمْ And the worst and the more evil of uh, women amongst you are al-mutabarrijat those mutabarruj is showing off and not having hijab at-tabarruj is showing oneself presenting people uh, oneself to people and not having wearing hijab al-mutaqayyilat al-mutaqayyilat the arrogant ones وَهُنَّ الْمُنَافِقَاتِ And these are the munafiqat, the hypocrites. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most respectable people amongst you in the sight of Allah are the pious ones. Those who are given taqwa, who have more taqwa, they are the more respectable akrama ikram to respect the more privileged the more worthy of respect in akhira and even in dunya they are the ones who have taqwa the more taqwa the more uh, ikram from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and even in dunya wa sharru nisaikum almutabarrijat And worst of your women are those who are mutabarrijat, who show off their beauty to others, to strangers who are not their mahram. Not husband and not the family members like father and brother. They reveal their, their selves to people who are strangers. al mutakhayyilat the arrogant ones. Arrogance because of beauty, arrogance because of lineage, arrogance because of being rich or because of no reason. Some people are arrogant 
but they don't know they don't have anything but they have arrogance wahunna almunafiqat these are the munafiqat these are the hypocrites la yadkhulul jannata minhunna illa mithlul ghurab they will not enter jannah except the number of women like the mithlul ghurab al a'sam al ghurab al a'sam they will not enter jannah except like the number of crows with white wings or white claws do we find such uh, crows with white wings it is a statement of denial they will not enter jannah if they enter then if you if you can find such crows with white wings then they will go it is such a statement so the the number of these women what number will go the number of equal to the number of al ghurab al a'sam the crows with white wings so do we have such crows no. till now we don't have so rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that they will not enter jannah it is a statement of rejection not showing that the equal number of these so there is no such uh, a crow so they will not enter this hadith is narrated by imam al bayhaqi and this is sahih in one of the uh, narrations by ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu he says wa nisaukum min ahli al jannati al wadud al aud ala zawjiha allati idha ghadiba جاءت حتى تضع يدها في يده ثم تقول لا اذوق غمصا غمضا حتى ترضى he again said that among you your women the most worthy of jannah wa nisaukum min ahli aljannah your women those who are going to enter jannah who are these al wadud the loving ones those who love their family their husband especially and beneficial to her husband al aud al aud beneficial she is of benefit in his dunya in his deen she is not a burden for him she is not harmful for him she is not harmful she is beneficial if he is going wrong she will tell him no you should not do this she is beneficial in dunya if he needs some Uh, 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 some uh, suggestion she gives him proper suggestion this does not mean that she will go for some job instead of him no because providing is the responsibility of the husband not the wife but beneficial means in the household things she is beneficial he wants to go to the office she is not giving him breakfast and he he got late because of that it's not beneficial so she should be beneficial to him in his daily life at home especially so al aud ala zawjiha who if her husband if her husband is upset and annoyed allati idha ghadiba if her husband is angry with her what does she do goes to her room and sleeps separately without talking to him no generally this happens today and she will send him messages through whatsapp i am not going to talk to you till you ap- apologize in person so allati idha ghadiba jaat hatta tada yadaha fi yadihi she the person the woman who if her husband is upset or annoyed comes and puts her hand in his hand and says by allah la aduqu ghamdan hatta tarda i shall not sleep until you are pleased with me i cannot sleep my eyes cannot close i cannot rest until i find that your anger has vanished and you are happy with me so a good wife is not a careless one a good wife a good woman is a person who cannot be happy without her husband being happy if all are happy i am happy she is of that mentality so if she finds that her husband due to some proper reason he is angry with her so she cannot go and go to sleep and start snoring and he he is angry with her this doesn't happen in the, in such a woman's life she cannot go to sleep she is worried that her husband is angry with her she will come to him 
not make him come to her. Generally, women know how to bring the husband. But she will go to him and talk to him and apologize and say that I cannot sleep. I cannot find rest in life until I find that you are, your anger has gone. You, you are happy with me. So this is the way of Muslim women. They are not arrogant because in this al mutakhayyilat they are the arrogant ones. But good women are not arrogant. Sometimes in life, even if you know that it's not my mistake, it's his mistake. It's not a mistake, it's a misunderstanding. I am not wrong at all. Even then, a good person, a big person will bow down and apologize. Why? To keep the family intact, to keep the family, family from being destroyed, to keep the children safe. Sometimes and often women have to, women have to adjust themselves with the husband. Why? Because a husband may become angry and he may torture the wife because he has power in the society and in the family, even in the physical sense, even in the legal sense. So, the, often women have to suffer because of the husband. So, a good woman, a Muslim woman is w very intelligent and she deals with the family problems very intelligently and she knows how to win the heart of the husband. So, in this hadith we learned that a Muslim woman is very devoted to her husband. She loves her husband and she knows how to, how to please him. Seven, which woman a man should marry and what is the worth of a woman who is righteous in Islam. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal tunkahu al-mar'atu li arba' women are married for four reasons, for four things li maliha wa li hasabiha وَجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا Four things are وَلِمَالِهَا Her financial background Wealth وَلِحَسَبِهَا Her good family Lineage uh, Her hasab is uh, She is from a very good background Political family They are rich and they are known in the city So big family Known and respectable family وَلِحَسَبِهَا وَجَمَالِهَا Her beauty وَلِدِينِهَا And her religion Her righteousness فَاظْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاك He showed how people marry women What are the things which people see when they marry women Some people see if they are rich Some people see the hasab Their family Some people see the beauty and some people see deen. So he did not say that you should marry for deen. You should marry for mal. You should marry for hasab. No. He is not saying this. He said tunkah. He says women are married for these reasons. But now he is suggesting. Father for bidati deen. You be successful by choosing the woman who is righteous. Bidati deen. The woman who has deen. Taribat yada. May your hand be besmeared with dust. This is a, a thing said that you should be successful and you may prosper. It's a dua, not a dua against a person, but dua for a person. So for the farbidati deen, this is the key sentence in this hadith. And this shows that there are many reasons why people marry women but an intelligent Muslim man must see deen. Other things are secondary. Even if they are not there, it's not a problem. But when marrying a woman, a man has to see deen. So for a woman, her mal, her family background, her beauty is not going to help. Her worth and value is in the, not in her beauty, not in her man, not in her family. 
her worth, true worth of a woman is in thee. So this hadith at one hand shows that a man should marry a righteous woman. But at the other hand, this also shows that for a woman before marriage, her intention should not be of uh, earning money so that she becomes, uh, you know, having a good job. So it's good for my marriage. I am from a good family. She cannot earn a family, but she tries to boast of her family so that she gets a good person in her life. And it is not that her beauty, going to beauty parlors and trying to be presentable to people and forgetting all the beauty is not haram, it's not wrong, it's not bad. But the basic thing what we should take care of is deen. She should learn aqeedah. She should learn ahkam, salah and hijab and all these things. She should learn how, what are the responsibilities of a woman? What are the responsibility of the husband? What are the responsibility of the parents towards children? What is her responsibility to the mother and the father of the husband? So she should learn all these things, ahkam of tahara and salah and saum and all these ahkam, she should know her deen. If there is no deen, all the beauty and mal and hasab has nothing to do with her success in dunya, neither in dunya nor in akhirah. So for a woman, deen is the best thing that she should look after in her life and she should earn deen rather than money and beauty and all these things.